morning, everyone. Morning. Um, so I have the privilege this morning of just opening up the scriptures a little bit. Um, I've been really encouraged. I've been listening to John Cleveley a lot, who's been doing a series because this is Holy Week, you know, the week between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. And, and just looking in the, the, um, the Gospels at all the events that happen between Jesus entering Jerusalem to all those cries of Hosanna and uh, all the things that happened in that week leading up to the crucifixion. And when he spent time in the temple and he threw out those who were misusing it, he wanted it to be a place of prayer. And, um, and then he had these encounters with the religious leaders really challenging them. They were so in opposition to what Jesus was doing. But he also had these lovely opportunities to teach his disciples. And um, he, he knew he wasn't going to be with them much longer. And so he just took these last opportunities to, to teach them some things. And one of those opportunities was just something they saw, something they observed in those temple courts. Um, and it's in Luke chapter 21 and verses 1 to 4. And it was just a, a lady coming and putting her two copper coins into the offering box. Um, so I just want to read it from Luke 21. It says, Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. And then he just kind of showed to the disciples that, that it wasn't the amount that mattered. It wasn't the fact it was just two copper coins that weren't worth very much at all. It was the heart that was behind the giving. It was that she gave everything she had out of her love for God. And she's commended for it. And I think, you know, sometimes we think what we have to offer is just so meagre, so so little. And what's the point? It's so valueless. And yet Jesus doesn't look at the value in the monetary terms. He looks at the heart behind it. And whatever we bring, however small our contribution, it's the heart behind it that really matters. But also I think this lady is such a beautiful picture of what Jesus was about to do. Um, so she came and gave her everything. And then Jesus was, was just about to do that days later, wasn't he? he? He had known what it was to be so rich, to be there in heaven with God. Uh, there's endless praise, there's worship resounding constantly. But Jesus chose to leave that and he chose poverty for our sakes. He humbled himself. He took on human flesh so there was that great humility in becoming a human being for our sakes and then again a further humbling of himself by becoming completely obedient to death and it was even the most shameful type of death um, I've been studying with my ladies group Philippians recently and just looking at that in Philippians 2 that the attitude of Jesus where he humbled himself and then humbled himself again just glorious um, and it just reminded me that this lady's offering reminded me in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. There's a lovely verse there that says this. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. Jesus was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we by his poverty, might become rich. So there's this wonderful exchange. Grace led Jesus to take on that position of poverty. But that poverty of Jesus led to such riches for us that just you cannot measure the riches that we've received. So like the poor widow, Jesus gave all he had. He, he was motivated, not like her, not motivated by duty, I better do this, but motivated by love. And it was the heart that really mattered. It was out of love that Jesus, but out of that one act of love, we gain immeasurable riches. And I just think um, it, we need to just come today and give our all to him. Just appreciate afresh the riches of grace that we've received. And um, there's a song that we used to listen to a lot years ago. And the words are the, these, let the weak say, I am strong. 
Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. And then the chorus is very apt for this Holy Week. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus died and rose again. And that's what we'll be celebrating on Easter Sunday. So we're going to sing um, a song that just brings us to Jesus. Let's worship him wholeheartedly and, um, and sing Hosanna to him this morning. Yeah, okay. So bear with. Hi everyone. So uh, we thought we'd start with a song of worship, really familiar, Praise is Rising. Uh, I thought Isaac was great when he said, why don't we stand up? Uh, if you can, where you are, why don't we focus again on King Jesus, the one who's on the throne. Let's lift our praise to him, not uh, just observe, but really uh, participate in worshipping God. Come, let's uh, make this a, a really excellent, what is it, Wednesday today? Wednesday morning. Do it, I think. We'll see. Okay, so we're gonna. We thought we'd um, spend some time this morning in prayer. And um, I was reading a couple of days ago this psalm, and it's just a great one for leading into prayer. It says, "May the Lord." Oh, sorry, Psalm twenty. May the Lord answer you 
in the day of trouble. In the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favour your burnt sacrifices. Lovely, may he remember your offerings as we've just been looking at the lady's offering. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfil all your plans. Let's bring our heart's desires to him today. Fulfil. Um, that he'll fulfil our plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfil all your petitions. Yes, We're going to bring our petitions to God now. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. O oh Lord, save the King. May he answer us when we call. Amen. So